What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with the final video in the Charge Blade Progression Guide for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. I'll be going over the best weapons and sets on the road to Fatalis. Let's get into it. To get higher rarity decos, you are going to farm the respective event quests depending on where you are in the Master Rank Climb. The Frosted Floor quest is the easiest one to run solo, but you do need 3 pieces of Master Rank Kirin to unlock the Great Rewards skill. This quest is used to get your level 4 decorations for element and your basic level 2 slots. The Zenogre and Teostra quests are used to get your good level 4 slot decorations. Your shopping list for decorations is as follows. 3 to 5 points of guard, 7 points of attack, 3 focus, 5 artillery, 7 agitator, 1 capacity boost, 3 weakness exploit, 7 crit eye, 3 offensive guard, 3 level 4 versions of each element deco, and 3 crit boost. With the exception of element, level 4 decorations with 2 points of a skill are bonuses for now while being the goal for endgame. In between siege cycles you want to farm decorations and steam tickets. Steamworks and the weekly bounties are your reliable way to farm celestial wyvarian prints for the 13 mantle tier materials you will need for upcoming sets. This isn't required but the RNG for mantles is not something you want to waste time on, especially since you can skip it with a purchase. Kulf Taroth is the source of the RNG meta element file weapons. Getting the Fire and Ice Kajar charge blades is your main priority since they are used against Alatrion. You can use the Dragon Charge Blade as a placeholder for now, but everything else will remain on top of the respective categories. Grab the Kulf Taroth legs since it has 2 points of crit boost and good slots for Fatalis mix sets later. We are grabbing the Raging Bracadillo set in preparation for Safi Jiva and to unlock augments in the guiding lines. Raging Bracadillo Summer is the best raw attack set in the game before Fatalis, but the fight can be brutal using your existing sets. Use the Ice set since Bracadillo's is allergic to the cold. You slot in Stun Resistance and Blast Resistance 3 to ignore Raging Bracadillo's BS. Hunt it until you have materials for its armor. You do need an Immortal Reactor for one of the armor pieces and the Charge Blade, so use two of your Celestial Tickets to finish the set if you don't get the rare drops. The set consists of the Raging Bracky Helm Alpha, Astral Chest Alpha, and the Raging Bracky Arms Alpha, Waist Alpha, and Legs Beta. You can upgrade to the Silver Rathos Chest Beta once you unlock it. This nets you a versatile crit raw set with Agitator 7 and Artillery 5. You can slot in your usual damage and functional skills on the set. While you can use element meta sets in the Guiding Lands, that requires you to swap to the right element every time a monster dies. Impact Belt is the best option as an all around source of damage against the menagerie of monsters and variety of resistances. Also, this can be slotted differently to fit in element until you get the Safi Jiva armor. The Safi Jiva charge blades have a unique mechanic. You can grab stat boost up to 5 times with varying levels of potency or grab 1 essence skill. You need Draco Light Ore to upgrade them and you can convert Safi parts into Draco Light Ore. Following the logic from my augment video, you want to upgrade for max levels of raw attack for power file and max levels of element for power element file. You can burn one augment slot for a comfy option like sharpness or an essence skill. Once these are fully upgraded, they become the best status weapons in the game aside from Raging Bracadios. Lastly, these weapons do not have custom upgrades, only augments. If you are on the off week of Kulf Tarath, the element files are placeholders until you can get Kajar weapons. Safi Jiva is a source of the meta element armor. You want the full set using the beta pieces with the alpha chest and Kajar weapons to get the quote unquote infinity element sets. It requires Safi parts, 4 mantles, and 1 large weaving gem, which is where you spend the 5 of your celestial tickets to craft a set if you don't have these materials. We run the full Safi set because the true Dragon Vein Awakening is a crack skill. It provides 40 affinity, 150 displayed element, 120 displayed status, effectively removes the element cap, and provides a jank lifesteal life drain mechanic that regens every 8th hit. 
This oddly synergizes with Coalescence. With the natural affinity of Kajar weapons, you reach 55 to 60 affinity without any investment. Due to their short white sharpness, you do need a protective polished decoration or the razor sharp charm which is earned by completing the capture quest for acidic glavinus. Once you are fully kitted out, it's time for the guiding lands. Your main priority in the guiding lands is to get the health augment and armor augments. Damage is nice and all, but using the Safi set for Elytron and Fatalis is a bit of a life drain. The health augment effectively negates the drain as long as you land your attacks. You have to clear your assignments to remove the Master Rank and Guiding Lands cap. Then you need to max out Coral Highlands to level 7 to get the necessary materials for the health augment. On the way up, you need the Guiding Lands Reef Dragon Bone at level 4, Charged Death Shockers from Zenogre at level 5 or lower, the Elder Spirit Vein Bone, and the Tempered Transhide from Tempered Namiel at level 7. Afterwards, augment for slots to fit in 3 levels of element and custom upgrade for 5 levels of element. Farm up enough augment materials for a minimum of 1 weapon since you can roll back augments and then augment a different weapon. Do note that slot augments cannot be rolled back, so prioritize ice and dragon. As for the armor caps, you need to be master rank 100 to unlock the materials. You can remove the level cap for your Safi armor by farming great spirit veins through the Ode to the Destruction event quest, pitting you against a tempered ruiner Nergigante. This will stack on another 100 defense for 1061 defense, improving your survivability against the upcoming bosses. Aside from the health augment, none of this extra stuff is required but it does maximize your potential to succeed in the hunt by min-maxing your damage and defense. Elytron is an element matchup by design so use fire or ice depending on which element it starts with. Charge Blade is one of the best element weapons in the game right next to dual blades and bow gunners. So you have the tools to meet that DPS check thanks to the Safi set with busted Kajar weapons. Make sure to bring a Stereo Jerky to survive the Eschaton Judgment. The assignments start with fire so equip the ice set. Keep grinding the matchup until you get the materials necessary for the weapon. Then fully augment it with your Guiding Land stockpile. You burn a Celestial Ticket if you don't get the mantle. The Sky Swear is gained through the Hornbreak, which is part of the fight so you should have a fair number of these. You skip the armor for now because it is a side grade of Safi Jiva. With this final weapon, you are ready for the finale of Iceborne. Vitalis is the final boss of Iceborne. You have done everything to prepare for this moment and all that is left is to kick his butt and steal a few of his body parts to make a cool new suit. Using some Pokemon logic, you use Dragon to fight the Dragon Monster. The full set and charge blade is solid, but there are a plethora of mix sets that can be covered in another video. This is the end of the road of the progression and now it's time for post game. Like if this video was useful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more Monster Hunter content like this, comment down below your thoughts on the video or Monster Hunter in general. That's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.